Hello, my name is Katherine Royal and I'm the Director of Environmental Education at Hall River State Park in Brown Summit, North Carolina. Today, we're going to take a journey along the Mountains to the Sea Trail, stopping at seven North Carolina state parks. We're going to have a visit from Howard Lee, the father of the Mountains to the Sea Trail. So, we had a lot of fun putting this together for you. Enjoy the journey from the mountains to the sea. Hello and welcome to Mount Mitchell State Park. My name is Caleb Blackwell and I'm a park ranger here. Uh, been asked to speak today about what makes Mount Mitchell State Park so unique. And uh, one of the greatest things that makes it so unique is that it's the highest peak east of the Mississippi River. We are currently standing at 6,684 feet above sea level. So we're uh, over a mile high up in the air. Um, the oxygen's much thinner up here, um, and Mount Mitchell State Park is also a high alpine environment. Uh, and what that means is that our environment and all the plant and animal species up here are only found in other places like Canada and upstate New York and Pennsylvania. So this is the southernmost range for a lot of those um, northern species of animals and plants. Mount Mitchell State Park is also an international biosphere reserve, which means we have a lot of variety or diversity of plant and animal species. So for example, some of the endangered species we have are a spruce fir moss spider that's microscopic and you can only see it if you're looking under a microscope or a magnifying glass. We also have a red crossbill, which is a uh, unique type of bird whose bill has been specially adapted the top part of the bill overlaps the bottom part of the bill so that it can get into the cones, kind of like pine cones of the Fraser fir and red spruce trees here. Over the generations, they've been able to adapt their physiology in order to get to that food source because food sources are pretty rare and hard to come by up here uh, this high in the mountains. One of my favorite things about Mount Mitchell State Park um, are mornings when the clouds uh, form a blanket over all of the um, valleys below. So when you look out off the observation tower, it's actually a blanket or ocean of clouds. Um, and you'll just see the mountain peaks um, coming up through those clouds. And so they call it islands in the sky. So it looks like a big ocean out there but you won't see any dolphins when you look out. The Mountains to Sea Trail also runs through Mount Mitchell State Park. Um, that's a trail that goes from the western part of North Carolina um, near Cherokee all the way to Jockey's Ridge State Park, which is on the Outer Banks of the Atlantic Ocean. And the Mountains to Sea actually splits off its normal path and comes up about 2,000 feet in elevation um, to the observation tower here and then goes back down. Um, you're likely to see several different varieties of wildlife when you're hiking the Mountains to Sea Trail. Uh, we have a very healthy population of black bears, uh, white-tailed deer, and uh, a special type of rabbit called an Appalachian cottontail rabbit. Um, you're also able to see a bunch of wildflowers in the spring and the fall. Um, we have one special species up here at Mount Mitchell called the purple fringe orchid that as I said, it doesn't grow anywhere else except in very northern environments like Canada or upstate New York. Mount Mitchell's a great place. If you've never been, I invite you to come visit. We do educational programs um, when we are able to, uh, and it's just a beautiful, special place. Thanks for tuning in. This trail has been developed by volunteers, people who've put in countless hours building bridges, cutting trail, maintaining trail, and of course, uh, really putting up signs and making it possible for hikers to not only follow the trail, but enjoy such beauty in North Carolina. Hello from Fowler Mountain State Park. My name is Dylan Joyce. I'm a ranger here at the park. And I'll talk a little bit today about the park and the Mountains to Sea Trail. And just for the history of the park, the park became a state park in 1968. And since then, it's grown to over 3,700 acres, including the area here at the mountain, and all the way down to land on the Yakin River, about seven miles south from here. Pilot Mountain is known for being a 
large like landmark that people use for a guide going all the way back to the Sar Native American tribe that lived in this area to the first settlers moving in. So Pilot Mountain is also known as what's called a Manadnock, which means mountain away from the mountains. So we have Pilot Mountain here, Saratown Mountain, and Hanging Rock State Park a little to the north and west. They're the closest other mountains. They all make up the Saratown Mountain Range, but our next closest mountains are the Blue Ridge, which are about 60 miles away as the crow flies. So the big pinnacle behind me here is been around for millions of years and it's left standing kind of jutting out the top of the mountain here as a result of it being a big deposit of quartzite which is a really hard erosion resistant rock that has weathered millions of years of rain and snow and ice and left this big pinnacle and the little pinnacle where I'm at sticking out whereas the rest of the mountain has slowly sort of eroded away around it. So a good way to see the different features and areas of the park are hiking along the mountains to sea trail. The Mountains and Sea Trail enters the park in the south down along the Bean Shoals access of the park, which is right along the Yakin River. And from there, you can take a short walk down to the Yakin River and hike the trails along the banks. And while you're doing that, keep a lookout for beavers or otters that might be swimming along in the river. And even bald eagles soaring above as two uh, eagles have lived in the park and nested here for several years now. It's probably the largest thing you'd see in the river. The river is really big down there, but you wouldn't see anything as big as like a dolphin until you got to probably the coast of North Carolina, maybe Jockey's Ridge State Park. So from there, follow the MST up the Corridor Trail, the park, which is a six and a half mile rolling hike from the river all the way up to the base of the mountain here. And from there, it continues around on the mountain trail, heads back out of the park and connects to the Sartown Trail on your way to Hanging Rock State Park as the next state park stop on the Mountains of Sea Trail. If you've got time, make sure to hike up the Grindstone Trail off the mountain trail and you can get to where we are filming right here today. And it's about a two mile hike, climbing about a thousand foot of elevation, but it offers really good views of the surrounding area and you can see some pretty cool animals possibly along the way too. You might see vol or, uh, ravens flying above maybe even timber rattlesnakes crawl around on the trail as both of those guys like rocky outcrops in the mountains. Um, timber rattlesnakes and any snakes, especially like basking out on the rocks around the trails and around the summit area of the park. But you might be more likely to see a park ranger out basking on the rock instead of a snake. So just keep an eye out. And when you make it up to here, you might see some other big birds flying around the big pinnacle in the summit area. And those are most likely gonna be vultures, either black vultures and turkey vultures. And it's not just that the park has a lot of dead animals or carry-on in it. It's just there's a nice thermal lift of wind coming up off the mountain. You might notice it's a little windy today here. And those guys just like to cruise around those thermals and hang out during the day. While you're up here, just take a hike, look around for different animals, enjoy the views. You can see the Saratown Mountains I was talking about, the Blue Ridge. Um, from here at Little Pinnacle Overlook, you can see downtown Winston-Salem, Greensboro, and High Point on really clear days and also as far into the Blue Ridge as Mount Mitchell on Grandfather Mountain. Once you've done that, it's gonna be a hike back down out of the park. And if you're following the MST, your next stop is gonna be Hanging Rock State Park, about 25 miles away. So hope you can see you guys on the trails here, but next up, send it on to Hanging Rock. Hello everyone, welcome to Hanging Rock State Park. I'm Ranger Williams, and I'm one of the lucky rangers able to work here with such beautiful features as Hidden Falls. This is one out of the five waterfalls that you can find here in our park. This is one of the ones if you hike the Mountain Sea Trail down or up, you'll come across and you're able to play in it as long as you're careful on the rocks. We are really lucky to have Hanging Rock State Park as part of our North Carolina State Park system. This area almost didn't happen. It almost went over to a development where you would have to buy an acre of land to live here if you paid the right price. Luckily, the North Carolina State Park got a hold of it in 1936 as part of the Sourtown Mountain Range to help preserve it. But back then, they tried to advertise it as a great vacation location where you can live and raise your family. And from the top of Hanging Rock, you'll be able to see the waves crash and the Atlantic Ocean and dolphins jump across. But I can tell you from today, looking over Hanging Rock, you wouldn't be able to see any of that. It is so far away, even with the clear air that they may have had back then, you wouldn't have been able to see it. 
This is a very unique ecosystem here at Hanging Rock State Park. As you walk through it, you'll see over 700 species of plants, along with lots of white-tailed deer, a pileated woodpecker, bobcats, along with some other critters you may not want to run into, like our timber rattlesnake, which we've helped protect here in our state park. Away from all the magnificent rock structures and beautiful waterfalls, we have a very unique and small ecosystem right here at Hanging Rock. Right behind me, we have a hillside seepage bog, very rare in North Carolina. And one of the most important plants, it's about the size of the tip of my pinky, is right behind me. We have the round leaf sundew. And this is one of the coolest plants that we have here, at least my opinion is a carnivorous plant and what happens is in the water surrounding the bog unsuspecting mosquitoes come flying out and are tempted by the little dew-like drops on the sundew hence its name and as it lands on that sundew the plant starts wrapping itself around it and enclosing it almost like a mummy in a in a tomb and from there the plant turns it into mush where that rich nitrogen goes back into the plant and then the leaf reopens to wait for the next unsuspecting victim to lay on its sundew drops. To end your virtual experience and hopefully get you to come out here and experience Hanging Rock itself, we got to, of course, talk about Hanging Rock, which is right behind me. This is our key feature that the park is named after, and it's also what the main reason people come out here to hike. It's quite a hike getting up there at 2,132 feet but it's worth it for the views, I promise. But you gotta make sure you come out with lots of water, bring your family and friends so it's a good experience, and of course, help us by leaving no trace. So come on by, and I hope to see you soon, and visit Hanging Rock State Park, part of the beautiful Sourtown Mountain Range that we're a part of. Uh, what the advantage of this trail is all about is being able to get people into natural areas and get exposed to sections of the state and different parts of the state that they could never get in the urban areas. One of my fascinating exposures was to see a giant mushroom that was actually at the time uh, in the process of developing. So these are some of the experiences that I've had that I think will be fascinating for young people who have probably never, would never see or be exposed to any of these uh, sites if we did not have this trail. So for generations to come, I'm confident that there's going to be great joy for a lot of people. Hello from Eno River. My name is Randy Bechtel and I'm an education specialist with North Carolina State Parks. Eno River is a great place to come and have some fun. You can fish, you can swim, and there's miles and miles of trails that you can hike to explore all the nature that's around us. And there's lots of plants and animals that call this area home too. This area is a park because local concerned citizens wanted to protect it. Way back in the 1960s, the city of Durham wanted to make this area a drinking water reservoir. But the citizens really wanted to keep it the way it was so they could keep enjoying it. So in 1972, they won their battle and it became Eno River State Park. The park is home to a whole bunch of different plants and animals, some of which are endemic, which means that they are only found in this area. Some examples of that are the, a fish called the Roanoke bass, uh, the Noose River water dog, which is not a water dog at all. It's a salamander, almost 12 inches long. And there's a plant called the yellow lady slipper that's also endemic. And the lady slipper we sometimes find on steep rocky bluffs. And believe it or not, the rocks here have an awesome, interesting story too. They were formed by ancient violent volcanic eruptions then they were squished and metamorphosed to the form that we see today. The Eno River just kind of winds through and erodes them. And the rocks in this area are also really good for humans to build mills. At one point, there are 30 working mills up and down the Eno River. And mills are used to, um, to power machinery, to grind grains like corn or wheat. The mills are no longer active. They've been long shut down. And you can still find some of the remains or the ruins of these mills up and down the Eno River in the state park.